guys? Who are you? Max, who are you? <laughs> My son's name Max. Why are they taking pictures of me? Uh, you see him on a post up the wall. That's a good looking guy. There you go. Look at the hat. How cool is that? This is a $40 hat. I'm infamous. What? Nothing, man. Other than the, the arrest for kidnapping so and why the. Are it's a long story. <laughs> it's a long story. Every st every word of it is true. Um, it was a long time ago. It was like uh, 1977. I was a kid, and I was like 16 years old. And we had um, we had tickets to see the Jukes. You know, the Jukes. It was like that was big time for us. And, you know, they just kind of hit the scene. And and if you grew up around here, it was about you know. Uh, you know, I mean, Bruce and the Jukes were like, like ours, you know. I mean, this was before, you know, went really big time, you know, before everybody made their deal with the devil. I mean, <laughs> that, um, so we, it was like a big deal, you know. And uh, took the train up here, me and my friends, Jerry. and uh, Jerry. We walked in. It was a crowd theater. It was like, you think the theater's run down now, man? It was like a shuttered theater, really, man. It was like really run down. They used to open it up one night a year to throw some concerts on. So we paid our seven dollars, we got our tickets, and um, we walk in. There's like a handwritten sign. It wasn't anything, you know, big time or anything. It just said, you know, due to illness, Southside Johnny will not be appearing tonight. Appearing tonight, it said um, the Asbury Jukes, Miss Ronnie Spector, Sugar Miami Steve. And the Asbury All Star. And then I think it's it's a like late show canceled. You know, on the bottom, it was just like it was just like tacked up on the wall. You know? So we're like, oh, you know. And um, we sat down and and um, you know back then like the Jukes and even Bruce had been like bar bands. You know, they weren't like it is now where people come in like, SUVs and, and stuff. What year is that? Is, that yeah, you were the 80s. No, it was the 70s, man. Back in back in the what day. What show was? What year? Uh, 1977. Everybody was at that show. Huh? Everybody in the world was at that show, man. There were 1,200 people there. There were 7,000 people at that show. That show yeah. and, um, and it was a lot of bikers still, because, you know, the, the Jukes were the house band that the pub was on right next door. It was a biker bar. So, you know, we were little kids, man. We just stumbled down the street, you know, and, uh, you know, we were sitting with all the bikers. You know, they were passing as Jack Daniels, which was, like, really cool, you know. And, um, and and they hit the stage, and Van Zandt was leading the band, you know, it was his band, you know, it was his Johnny's, and Bruce was playing rhythm, and, um, and you know, you kind of just sensed that it was going to be a pretty cool show, it was going to be a fun show, but um, they played like three or four songs, they, they opened with like, um, the song that they always opened with at that time was, this time it's for real, you know, the horns were kicking in, and, and um, you know, Bruce was playing rhythm. I think he was like, you know, singing some harmony vocals. But uh, about the third or fourth, maybe fifth song, the Jukes used to always do their version of Fever. Like, and we had had like, you know, everyone heard Bruce's version. Of Fever. We actually had like this 45 bootleg. You know, we used to buy it on, like, like in the back of some store. We had the Fever on one side and like some other boot on the other side. It was on Jersey Devil Records. And uh, so we knew Bruce's Fever and the Jukes' Fever had come out on the first song, and it was like. Bruce's was cool, but it was like Ray Charles was laid back, and the Jukes Fever had these horns, man, and it was like, and, um, but like the stage was black, and, um, and the spotlight started like looking around on stage, like it was like, like it was like some air raid drill or something, they were trying to find, and all of a sudden it kind of like finds the back, in, in the back corner, Clarence Clemens was up there in the horn section, just in black, from head to toe, man, the big black hat, you know, black shirt, black pants, black boots. And the Jukes used to start Fever with like this real bluesy harmonica solo that, that, that Johnny would play. But um, it was like just this one spotlight on Clarence and, and, and man, it's just like, it was like, he was like blowing like, like white heat, man. People were like, the biker next to me was like, oh, you know, <laughs> it was like, it was, it was like people were like melting, right? And, and it just got dirty. It was like real dirty sacks. The spotlight pinned off Clarence. Center stage, and Bruce was there, you know, and and you heard the piano, da da da, da. and and um, and he just goes into when I get on the phone, and I'm 
place just like exploded. I mean, and 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 that was like this moment that like people were like realized that this was really because he did the Jukes version of, of Fever and the horns were just kicking in. And back then in the 70s, it wasn't there was no divide between the audience and Springsteen. You know, he was among us and we were among him, and it was just like. You, there was a, there was an intense sort of emotional bond between the local people. You know, people called him Brucey. You know, it was like the bikers all knew him as Brucey. Are you going to the Brucey show tonight? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to the Brucey show tonight. Yeah, yeah. And so this was just like something special. And um, and the show from there, it was like it was like just a fog of memories that are very very clear and specific. But it was just it just took off that night. I mean, they, they played for like another two hours with the Jukes, and Ronnie Spector did some songs, and, and they, they came out, and uh, Bruce did um, You Mean So Much To Me with Ronnie Spector, where the two of them were like dancing with each other, and the horn things, and the, fin they, the Jukes finished with like, um, you know, they're having a party, and they tore the house down, and, and then they did you Mean So Much To Me, and I think they used to do this old Sam and Dave song, you know, you don't know, like I know, and, and they just tore the house down, it was just a great show. You know, it was like three hours they played, and um, they they leave the stage, and like somebody goes like you know uh, comes out, and you know, house lights come up, and some roadie comes out and goes, you know, thank you very much, see you next year. You know, and they always said that at, at, at shows in the '70s, you know, and it was like everybody, you know, was all clapped out, and like you know everyone, you know, was just standing there though, you know, and it was like the show was over, man, you know, but like nobody moved. And it wasn't like people were like, you know, like holding matches or anything. People were just standing there, you know. And like we were like, you know, like the last train was coming up and like my friend goes, you know, you wanna leave? And we were like, no, I ain't leaving. <laughs> I ain't leaving until everybody else leaves, you know. And um, we're just standing there and just standing there in the theater, you know. And uh, after a couple minutes another roadie comes out and goes, you know, thank you, you've been a great audience, see you next year. And nobody moved. I don't mean like, like you know, it wasn't like like half the crowd left and a few diehards left. I mean nobody left. You know, it was like everybody in the theater was just standing there. You know, and, and I mean it seemed like a really long time. It was probably only like like five or ten minutes, maybe ten minutes. But um, you know, you're standing there in the theater and nothing's going on for ten minutes. You know, that's a long time. You know, when you're 16 years old and your train ride home is leaving. But um, all of a sudden the house lights go down. You know. And the place goes, you know, yeah, you know. And the stage was dark. And I remember this real clear because, like, the the light, the lighting guy they had back then, you know, it was like, you know, everything. The way they lit Bruce's show back in the '70s was there was some mystery. You know, they used a lot of purples, and, and like it was like something's going on up there. You know, but I remember they they came out and the stage was lit like a little bit with blues. You know, and you see them all moving around on stage, and they said, "Whoa, that's the E Street Band." You know. And they all took places, and, and Bruce was center stage in a blue spot. And it's Bruce, and they, they started with you know the piano and the harmonica for Thunder Road. And this is like you know back when the song was not only sort of like a reference back to Lost Innocence, it was Innocence then. You know, yeah. was, they, we were all kids, and he was young, and, and it just it it and that song builds from like you know this dark you know early morning blue till it was like. The stage was just, you know, horns were blasting, the stage was blasting, and they, and, and that started, you know, that was like, just started where it took off, they did like, I don't know, maybe four or five more songs, I think they did like Back Streets, and um, I just remember the last two songs they did, they did um, Rendezvous, which was like this English pop thing that just had the crowd like, boom, and the into Jackie Wilson's Higher and Higher, also. and I got into all this old soul music, and like looking at the back of it. But it had this great bass line, and both bands were on stage, and it went on forever, man. And what we did was... Okay. Okay. All right. Max, the governor's coming. So we gotta move? So we have to move for Governor Corzon. <laughs> you tell John I said. <laughs>